The brown recluse is one of the most infamous and feared spiders in the world. Countless sources claim that their bite causes gruesome, gaping wounds that rot your flesh and even have the power to kill. No doubt you've heard stories like this before, but what if I told you that everything you thought you knew about the brown recluse is wrong? If you live in the United States, the brown recluse probably needs no introduction. Hailed as one of the most dangerous spiders in the country, many people are terrified of recluses because their bite is laced with flesh-destroying venom said to be so deadly it can bore a hole through your body or rot off an entire limb. Everyone from teachers to mass media and even doctors seem to confirm these ideas all the time. And it feels like everyone has a story of someone they know ending up with a massive, rotting wound from this spider. The legends about the brown recluse have become larger than life, but how much of this is actually true? That is what we're gonna show you today. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you become an insider in the natural world. And a big part of that is breaking down the myths that surround our planet's most feared and misunderstood animals, so we can all learn to coexist with them better. That goal is particularly important with brown recluses, because they are infamous for living right among us, lurking in basements, garages, and other forgotten corners of our homes. Here in southern Louisiana, sharing space with recluses is a fact of life. And to find them, our friend and local expert Zachary Gray is taking us to a warehouse he knows of that is absolutely infested with a population of Mediterranean brown recluses, introduced here from Europe. They may be from across the Atlantic, but their bites are practically identical to our native recluses, as are the myths about them. Unlike the local species though, these Mediterranean recluses have spread all across the country, so it's not exaggeration to say that one could be in your house right now. In the right areas, this species is surprisingly abundant, and after only a little bit of searching, we were able to turn up exactly the spider we were looking for. Look at this, we got some cellar spiders in here. Mm -hmm. Come over, Come over here real quick. Go around and flip that thing right there. Like this? Like this? Yep. Alright. It is flat and promising. There's one. There we go. No way. Let's go. Ooh. Actually a nice sized one too. Yep. Oh, that's nice. No mistaking it. That is a brown recluse. Now they're pretty fast moving, but I can always do that. Slide the lid under. Come on up there, buddy. There we go. Woohoo! That is what we came here for, the brown recluse. Look at that, epic. The interesting thing about recluses is that oftentimes where you find one, you're going to find more. And not two minutes after we caught the first individual, Zach called out that he had spotted an even bigger one. We can probably leave those. Like, oh, oh huge one. Holy That's the one you cow. want. All right, Bowser. Nice spot, Zach. I'm just gonna go for it. Got him. Oh, that is a choice specimen. No way. I can even see it on the GoPro. Mm -hmm. That is super exciting. All right, so I think we got two decent sized ones here. These are gonna be our stars. Okay, that didn't take long at all. No, not at all. And we have exactly what we were hoping to see. Not one, but two brown recluse spiders. Now, these vials are a little bit difficult to see, so we grabbed some random pieces of wood. Let's see if he'll come out. First one. Here you. This guy's rearing to go. There we go. Now this is something that would make most people skin crawl here in the United States because the brown recluse is easily one of the most infamous arachnids, probably one of the most infamous animals in general would agree. in the entire country. And the reason for that is what people believe about their bites. You'll see, even if you Google brown recluse bites, you'll see these huge, disgusting looking necrotic lesions that take up half of someone's arm. And that's what people think will happen if one of these spiders bites you. But the reality is a lot different and a lot tamer than you would expect. So that begs the question, what actually happens if a brown recluse were to bite you? 
So generally, if you're bitten, mostly what that's gonna look like are small necrotic lesions, little red marks that will develop at the bite site, mm -hmm. and you'll get itchiness and swelling. The skin will start to peel back sometimes, but for the most part, they're actually pretty mild. And I do wanna point out, a lot of these necrotic lesions are really gonna be pea-sized, or mm -hmm. the size of a coin. We're not talking about something that's gonna consume an entire limb. Now, in some cases, the necrosis can grow a little bit depending on how your body reacts to the venom. Everyone reacts differently with a bite like this, but for a normal adult, you really would not expect these symptoms most of the time. Now, interestingly, there's actually a name for the condition that this spider's bite causes. It's called loxicellism, which is named after their genus, loxicelles. And most often, that presents as what's called cutaneous loxicellism, basically just meaning skin conditions. Exactly, and in those cases, it almost never requires medical intervention. You can pretty much just use over-the-counter pain medications to reduce that inflammation. But as long as you're using basic wound care techniques, you should be just fine. However, there is a worst case scenario with the bite of the brown recluse. Now, the thing is, that worst case is not what people say it is. Oftentimes, what you're gonna hear people talk about with the brown recluse is, my cousin got bitten by one, my uncle got bitten by one, his foot rotted off, his hand was almost taken off at the hospital. People think you're gonna lose limbs to these animals, and that's just not the case. There is, as Evan mentioned, a worst case scenario, but it has to do with the effects of the other form of loxicellism systemic loxicellism. That is when the venom enters your bloodstream and is circulated around your body. So you're gonna start to feel some more pronounced effects, things like nausea, vomiting, and muscle and joint pain. Now, in an extremely small subset of these systemic bites, you can experience what's called hemolysis, or the destruction of red blood cells. And that is particularly concerning because it can lead to blood clots, organ failure, and even death, as essentially your kidneys aren't able to process the venom that's entered your bloodstream, and it can cause acute renal failure, which that can be life-threatening. Now, we do want to emphasize that the rate at which this both systemic loxicellism and then the hemolysis associated with it occurs is incredibly low. There have been exceedingly few deaths from this species and the vast majority of bites will have no symptoms whatsoever. So that leads into the question, how has this myth become so pervasive? Where does it come from if the reality is so different from what people say? And unfortunately, that has a lot to do with how these spiders are misidentified and misdiagnosed. Now the bites are misdiagnosed almost as often as the spiders themselves are ID, even by medical professionals. Remember, medical doctors are not arachnologists, and that's understandable. We don't expect them to be experts about spiders, but what it means is that when people come in thinking they've been bitten by a spider, it's all too common for doctors to say, oh yeah, that's a brown recluse bite, when in reality, neither the doctor nor the victim who received the bite even saw the spider in the first place. Right. So they're just gonna call it out as a brown recluse because that's the first thing on their mind, when in reality, it could be something a lot more serious, like a bacterial infection. Exactly, it makes a good story. Oh, I got bitten by a spider mm -hmm. and that's why my arm blew up like this. But the fact of the matter is, that's rarely the case relative to how many times people are getting skin infections. We have bacteria all over our bodies at all times. And a lot of it just lives on us, including things like staph bacteria, which is one of the main culprits of these big necrotic infections that are far more common than any recluse bite. And the thing is, people who go into the hospital saying, I've been bitten by a spider, you'll get spider bite treatment. But if what you actually have is a raging staph infection, that is actually how you're gonna lose your arm. It will not be from the spider. It will be from misdiagnosing the condition that you have. But that brings us to a very important point. If people can't identify them properly, doctors can't identify them properly most of the time, it's incredibly important that you arm yourself with the information to be able to tell if a spider is a brown recluse or not. I would say this is one of the most chronically misidentified spiders in the entire country. Absolutely. And that's because we have so many spiders and a lot of them look like this. Small, somewhat nondescript brown spiders that could easily be mistaken for or a true recluse. So first, we'll point out the identifying characteristic that most people, most 
field guides will tell you to look for, which is the fiddle-shaped marking on the cephalothorax, the front segment of the spider. This is a pretty good way to tell most brown recluses because it is a very iconic marking. However, it's hard to see, it's often faded, and not all recluse spiders will have that fiddle-shaped marking. And there are many other spiders here in North America that have very similar markings. So really, you don't want to use coloration alone to identify these spiders. There is, however, something that every recluse spider will have, and it's a great way to identify really any spider in this genus. The way you can do that is looking at the arrangement of their eyes. Recluse spiders have their eyes arranged into what are called dyads, where two eyes are grouped together and they'll have three of those. And that is one of the easiest ways to pick out any spider in the Loxicelles genus. And for the most part, spiders have eight eyes, mm -hmm. but spiders in their family, Sicoriidae, have six eyes. Now, it probably sounds kind of ridiculous to say, if you want to identify a spider, look it in the eyes. People don't want to be anywhere near mm -hmm. them. But this is actually a point we want to make, that with this spider, Right there, I'm out of strike range, right? Here I'm out of strike range. Right in front of him, I'm out of strike range. These animals cannot hurt you if you are not actively touching them. They're not gonna jump on you. They're not really jumpers at all. So there is no risk in getting up close to take a look as long as you don't touch it. That's the key. And there's one more thing that really brought us here today, which is to clear the name of these spiders in the best way we know how. We want to prove that these animals are not out to get you by getting these infamous spiders in hand to show you what actually happens if someone interacts with these spiders. Come here, you. I'm just gonna give them a gentle tap on the leg. Hi. Now you may notice these spiders can put on a decent burst of speed when they want to, and I think being, there we go, being on our hands is gonna be a little less comfortable for them than those boards we were just using because we have hairs, we're kind of sweaty right now. It's more of a foreign environment to them than the kind of hard wood or rock structures that they'd be under. But look at what they're doing right now. That's not an aggressive animal, not at all. It's just trying to figure out what's going on, seeing what we're doing, it's making sense of its new surroundings, but they are not trying to hurt us. The thing about these spiders is that as long as we're not applying pressure to them, they're not gonna really have any reason to feel threatened. The way to avoid a brown recluse bite is to prevent a situation in which you don't see it and you accidentally squeeze it, put your hand down on it. That is something that could trigger a bite because in that scenario, it's fearing for its life and it feels that the only chance it has to get out of that interaction is to use that bite. Now, even if you see one of these spiders, they're not gonna come after you. And as you can see here, we can handle them. This girl could bite if she wanted, not gonna happen. And the reason for that is this venom is extremely precious to these spiders and they have so little of it. A single bite from this spider will inject at a maximum 0.1 microliters. That's like 0.0002 teaspoons. That is literally microscopic. Incidentally, the amount of salt Spencer likes on his food. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that we want to coexist with these spiders is not only because they just don't want anything to do with you. There's no reason to fear these animals, but it's because they're actually doing a lot of good for you, for your environment. These are incredible hunters, and that powerful venom that everyone's so worried about is the main tool that helps them get rid of the insects that you probably really don't want around in your stuff anyway. Now, I think we could probably handle these two girls all day long to keep driving home this point that they are not aggressive, they're not interested in biting, but we do want to get them back under their cover so they can continue hunting for the day. But I am ecstatic to finally have brown recluse spiders in hand. This has been a long time coming for us. We're Oh yeah, pretty strange in this respect, but this is very exciting for us. So I think at this juncture, we'll get these little girls back. But well done, bro. We did it. Brown recluse spiders in hand. All right. These guys have been incredible sports. I'm super happy that we've finally gotten the opportunity to clear the name of the brown recluse just a little bit. And I hope that by seeing the true nature of these spiders, we can help a few of you out there be a little bit less afraid. All right. See you, buddy. She was under that life vest. Yep, I'm gonna put her back. Bye, sweetheart. Now you wanna hang out forever, huh? There you go. Get back under there. Awesome. All right. This guy, if I'm not mistaken, is right next to her. Right there. 
So I'll just give you a gentle prod. There you go. Nice. All right. Spiders are back. And I am very, very happy about that. I think by now it's pretty clear that brown recluses have a much worse reputation than they deserve. Their actual biology just doesn't line up with the crazy things people say about them. It's ironic, really. They'll often spend their whole lives in human spaces, yet they're perfectly happy to never interact with people at all. And in fact, they actively avoid us as much as possible. We have to remember that we are a bigger threat to these spiders than they could ever be to us. So as long as we respect their space, the chances of having a negative interaction with one are pretty much zero. And when it comes to the world's most feared and misunderstood creatures, that's the case more often than you'd expect. Rattlesnakes are arguably the most infamous group of animals in North America, but are they really the monsters we make them out to be? If you want to learn the truth about these iconic reptiles, check out this video, where we get up close and personal with a timber rattlesnake to clear their name once and for all. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Have sick. It's Have just... twice a week. What a cool critter. What a Such an animal. animal encounter in Zach's wild yeah. backyard. Truly one of life's wildest adventures while braving the not wilderness today. And we've done a good wild report. Satchel Snow. 